Okay, this is going to be a new video about um, the 510k e-star process. Um, FDA um, e-copy is um, our old um, email that we've been using. We're going to continue to use that for the next year, but the FDA is officially announced now that FDA e-star is going to be the new template that they require as of October 1st, 2023. So we got a one-year transition. And uh, to go along with that, our company, Medical Device Academy, has decided that we are going to introduce a new logo and we will be building out a new uh, small landing page and website for FDA uh, 510K course that we have. And, and FDA uh, will move our e-copy content over to that website as well. It'll be called FDAestar.com. And so we came up with this new logo where the um, poor little USB has gone to die. And we now have FDA eStar has replaced the USB, and we no longer do e-copies. Um, we can do e-copies for the next year. The FDA has allowed it. I'm showing here on the screen. Uh, the right-hand side is what we have for um, the CCP portal, the customer collaboration portal at the FDA. And the top button is for eStars. So you click on that, and it allows you to upload an eStar PDF template that you've populated with all the information and it has to be complete. The other option is the e-copy. And for the next year, you'll be able to use the old method. And that's what we currently use for, um, for pre-subs as well. However, I've also learned from somebody that is involved in the process at the FDA, they already have the 513Gs validated in a uh, type of e-star template. They're calling a pre-star, kind of a cool name. Um, but the, the challenge there is that it isn't approved yet, so nobody has access to it except the FDA. They're still working out the bugs on it, uh, but it is fully validated. And then the next thing that they're looking at is making pre-subs in general available as an e-star template, which would probably use the same pre-star uh, format. But that isn't publicly available for anybody yet, and we'll let you know when it is. Going on to our next slide here. For those of you that have been following us, we have a customer collaboration portal. They did a pilot program with companies that had lots of active submissions, uh, high volume submitters. Those people were given customer collaboration portals first, and our company was one of those. And those people, they allowed to do the e-star uploads. But now that October 1st has gone by, uh, I believe on October 3rd, they made it available to everybody. Um, and now if you want to get your own uh, um, customer collaboration portal account. You just click on the hyperlink at the bottom. It can also be found on the FDA's uh, website if you if you look for this page. Um, another thing to note is when you are uploading things to the customer collaboration portal, you have to make sure that you're using the most current version of the eStar template. Um, if you use an old version of the template, so you, let's say you started filling it in six months or a year ago, and now you're finished, you're going to find you can't upload it because it's an obsolete version. Uh, so they do periodically update those, and you want to make sure you're using the most current version. The next thing, the 510K process. They've updated the process. So anybody that's familiar with 510Ks in the past, it had 20 sections, section 1 through 20. Some people would add a 21st section for the RTA checklist. And that would be your standard format that you would submit to the FDA. And they wanted you to provide a table of contents that links to each of the sections so that you can tell, you know, where section 10 should always be your device description. Section 11 should be your executive summary. Section 12 should be your substantial equivalent. They've done away with the need for a table of contents because with a new e-star template, you can only organize it one way according to that PDF template. So there's no need for a table of contents. They know where everything is and it's always in the same order and everything's exactly where they want it to be. They've designed it that way. So it makes it easier for them because they force everybody to use the same format. No more need to have a table of contents, which um, in theory would reduce your work, but the PDF templates are slower because you have to wait for it to upload the data that you're attaching. So that slows you down a little bit. It's a trade-off. But in the end, as you get faster and faster at filling in these e-star templates, the end result is a faster submission. Um, it certainly is going to be something that 
um, is going to be faster for the FDA review because they know it's complete right off the bat. They don't have to do an RTA screening anymore or refusal to accept. They do a technical screening to make sure your answers are consistent and match the data that you've attached. And then they go right into their substantive review. So that process is streamlined. The downside is it takes longer for people to fill in these because they have to write a lot of the information that reviewers are writing for the reviewer now to answer each of the questions. So we're going to be in the process of updating our templates that we use and create some living documents that really uh, walk people through what you have to answer for each section of the 510Ks. The new ESTAR guidance has also been released. So they've made a lot of changes in the last month. September 22nd, they released the new guidance document. It outlines the different sections of the ESTAR and it gives you a um, notification officially that October 1st of next year, 2023, will be the last date, um, will be the end of you being able to submit things through um, an e-copy. And after that date, you'll have to use the e-stars. So you've only got one year left of the old format and you have to switch by then. Um, if you wanna download that document, I provided a hyperlink at the bottom. Another thing that changed is a big price increase. Um, you saw the gas prices go up, you saw your housing prices go up, and now you're seeing your FDA user fees go up. Um, most of the user fees went up by 17.9% roughly or 17.8%. And the 510K fees went up 55.9%. So it was a huge increase. Uh, the de novo did not increase by that much, thankfully. It was the same rate as the others, I think 17.8%. But the small business fee now is almost five grand and the standard fee is 19 grand. So now if you apply for small business qualification and the FDA grants it, you will actually save almost $15,000, so $14,900 something. I think it's 903. So that's a huge difference in the cost of um, your user fees from what it was before. That's a very big increase and that's gonna affect some companies. But I think it was also warranted because if you look at the cost of uh, other countries like Europe in the cost that they have for reviewing submissions, the submissions are not 100 or 300 pages like they used to be anymore. Now they're thousands of pages long, and that's why these user fees are going up. Um, but if you're interested in the small business qualification, um, and you should be every year, October, I'm sorry, August 1st, you should be applying. And there's a video here that explains that, and we're going to be re-recording a video for that. Um, th that's our web page. It has all the links. It has the forms to fill out. It gives you... Uh, uh, embedded YouTube videos, and we're going to be adding a new YouTube video that's specifically about the new um, requirements for the uh, small business qualification, step by step, the seven steps that you have to follow to complete that process. Uh, but if you haven't already applied, you should because um, you can apply as soon as August 1st for October 1st. Next, little advice do not fill in the E Star too soon. If you haven't even written your device description or haven't finalized your device description, it's too soon to be filling in the E-Star. That doesn't mean you can't open up the E-Star and go in there and answer certain questions and click on radio buttons to see what information the FDA wants if you're not familiar with it. But if you're one of our clients, definitely don't do that. And we'll explain that in the next slide. Um, if you fill in the templates ahead of time, and then have to change things, then you have to delete the old attachment and attach the new information. So don't attach drafts. You can't edit them once they're attached. Um, also, um, if they change the template, which they have done several times, then you will have to export all your data and it will not export the attachments. You will have to reattach everything. So you're just wasting your own time if you attach a bunch of templates to the um, to the eStar or a bunch of attachments to your e-star and answer all the questions, and then they change the format on you. Um, but reviewing those questions can help you identify gaps in your testing or your labeling. So it is helpful to know what's in there and answer the questions for that purpose. Note to our clients, please do not upload everything to the e-star. Do not upload anything to the e-star. Upload it to the folder that says, Let's say it says for Boomika to review, for Sharon to review, for Rob to review, for Mary to re review. 
please put it in that folder so we can review it, make any edits if edits are needed, and then PDF it and upload it. And we keep um, the Word version separate. We normally upload the, the PDF versions so they don't get changed and somebody can't edit them and then reattach them. We want to just upload the PDF versions. But if you upload it to the eStar, then we have to download it to read it, and that slows us down. It's much faster to just have it in a folder in Dropbox. Um, and we can't change the documents once they're attached. We would have to actually download them, edit them, delete the old, and then reattach. So that, that's another reason why we don't want you to do that. Um, for the actual submission, the first section you start with, and the way we're going to do our recordings on how to do 510Ks, we're going to break it up into the new sections that are in the eStar. In the first section, at the very beginning of the eStar template, it asks you for what type of submission it is. And before you answer the first couple of questions, most of the eStar template is blank. It's a very short template until you answer those questions. As soon as you decide whether it's a pre-market notification 510K or it's a de novo, it expands very rapidly asking you a whole bunch of other things. The next question it asks is, is it a traditional abbreviated or special? A special 510K means you already, your company, not some other company, your company has a 510K cleared for the same device. And this is a newer version. You have to use your own device as the predicate. So if that's not the situation, don't click special. If it's abbreviated, this means you're following a guidance document that says to use an abbreviated format. That's what they would prefer. Or you're following an international standard for the format of a submission. Those are two cases in which you can do abbreviated submissions. But it, statistically, if you look at the amount of review time, there's no advantage. Even though they say it's supposed to reduce the amount of time and make it 60 days instead of 90, the, the data doesn't bear that out. Um, typically, the review times are about the same for the abbreviated versus the traditional, but it means more work for you or more work for us as a consulting firm because you have to write a summary of every single test report, and they are likely to still ask you to provide the test reports. If you do a traditional format, you can upload the full test report. You don't have to write the summary for everything. You just need to fill in the eStar template, so that should be an easier approach. But um, we haven't, we do very, very few abbreviated submissions. So that's another reason the fewer they see, the less comfortable they are with them. The traditional is by far the most common submission for the FDA, and that's the route we recommend. Um, the application type, you have two different types. One is a new submission, one is additional information. So the way it should work is you submit, they do a technical review, they send you an email in about 15 days saying, your reviewer has been assigned and they're starting this substantive review. That's the end of the technical review process. Now you're in substantive review. The next communication should come at 60 days from the date you initially submitted. And that should be either an AI hold, which would be additional information request, or you're getting an email saying we're in the interactive review. If they send you a deficiency letter that's requesting additional information, when you respond, you will click on this additional information and submit the um, new submission using the eStar template, all the things you did before, but you're going to remove the obsolete things, upload the new things, and address their concerns. And there's a place for that to be done in the eStar. So the, that's the first section, application and submission type. And another thing, um, over on the left-hand side here, you see things are green. Green means that selection is done. If it's gray, it doesn't need to be filled in. If it's red, it means something's missing. The next section is the cover letter and reference. Um, typically, what we will have is our cover letter. Um, it, we have a cover letter template, so you don't have to write your own cover letter. And it meets all the requirements. We use this all the time. But you fill in the Word document, then you convert it to a PDF, and then you sign it. And so that's what we've done here. We've actually attached a document and you click on the blue add attachment and then it, you uh, search for the document and you attach it. And then if you realize you've got to make a change, then you go delete attachment and then you add attachment again to the upload the revised one. Sometimes you will have letters of reference. Um, you, it might be like a reference to um, um, a math file, a math, uh, device master file 
for or another submission that your company has. So in those cases, you would uh, attach a letter of reference, but those aren't used very often. Um, another thing that you could attach in this section is if you have a response to, um, and I, I don't know whether it's in this section or the next one, but um, there's a section for attaching responses to pre-subs in addressing um, any questions that they had. There's a, a place for adding attachment there. And sometimes I've actually attached it here because there wasn't another place to put it. Next section is company. This is very straightforward. As I said, when, you, when you're when you missing information, it's red over on the side. So this applicant information section is incomplete. And it's because we haven't filled in all the spaces. Once you fill in all the spaces, then these turn to green. And when the section is complete, the, the banner at the top turns green here. And this is the information they're looking for. If your company is working with a consultant like Medical Device Academy, we usually click on add correspondent consultant button and you have this next slide show up. And so for this, it's essentially very similar information. They're asking for your contact, your title, um, but this is for the consultant, not for the company. And you can have more than one consultant that's listed here, or if you change your mind, you could delete it, or if you change consultants, you could delete it and add a new one. So that's this slide. And it only pops up if you clicked on the add correspondent consultant on the previous section. So that takes us to the end of this first section. That's just the beginning of the E-Star. And as we go, we're going to have new YouTube videos about the E-Star, and we're going to have private webinars for people that have bought our 510K course. Um, if you get the 510K course, you get all of the above, and you get the native content, and you get the templates that we're giving you for each attachment. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or schedule a meeting with me using the Calendly link. And don't forget to attend our live streaming videos on 510K and other things on Fridays at 1230. Thank you.